So let's see how the door in the face technique can work. In their 1975 study, Robert Cialdini and his colleagues said to people, would you be interested in helping out with this really good cause? We have some troubled kids and we need counselling for them. Maybe you could help out for two hours a week for two years and provide volunteer counselling. Now, of course, people replied something along these lines. Oh, I'd love to, but you know, I've got a life, so no. The researchers would then follow it up with the real request. Fine, of course, I understand that. Actually, I've got this favour to ask. These kids are going to the zoo in the afternoon and we've got no one to look after them. Would it be okay if you were that person? Could you go chaperone these kids? So, how many people said yes? Half. People are nice, right? That's a big favour. Like 50% of people are like, by all means, I'm prepared to drag this group of troubled kids who might be extremely difficult to handle to the zoo for the whole afternoon. That's impressive, and it's due to the door in the face technique. Remember, they started with the big request for a two-year commitment and backtracked to asking for help taking the kids to the zoo for one afternoon. But what happens if you don't use the door in the face technique? When the researchers just came out with, how would you like to take the kids to the zoo for the afternoon? This time, far fewer people agreed. Actually, only 17% of people said yes. This is partly about reciprocal concessions. Humans are so nice that every time we say no, we feel a twinge of something. We feel like we owe something. There's also that contrast effect. Next to something very big, other things don't seem so big anymore. If you've just brought a $200 dress, a $50 belt doesn't seem like such a big thing. This can also be taken advantage of by governments and salespeople. Cialdini, from his experience working at a used car yard, said that sometimes in negotiations, buyers would ask for a cheaper deal. They might say, look, can you throw that window tinting in with the deal? The salesman knows full well they can do that but then gives a big performance. No, we can't do that for you. We can't possibly do that. Hang on, do you know what? I like you. There's no harm in trying. I'm just gonna to go to the boss and see what he thinks. So they go into the boss's office and they just talk about golf or whatever. And then the salesperson comes back out and he says, do you know what? The boss didn't like it, but we had this big battle about it. And at the end, we came down on your side. We can do that for you. Now, you've ended up at that same place. The salesperson made the concession, but psychologically it feels very different for the buyer. The buyer feels as though this guy has gone into battle for them, even if they haven't. So now the buyer's in the palm of the salesperson's hand.